In this video, we're going to discuss the three-level fair value hierarchy. But first, let's understand what fair value actually is. So the technical definition by the Financial Accounting Standards Board is that fair value is the price that you would receive to sell an asset or transfer a liability in a transaction between market participants at the measurement date. And the measurement date is key because basically we're thinking about the price as of today instead of the price as of whenever you bought the asset, for example. So let's say that five years ago you bought an asset for $200, right? So this is five years ago, and we're thinking about what is the asset worth today? Maybe today it's worth $300. We don't care what you paid for it. We care what it is worth today. And so that's what fair value is about. But here's the thing. We bought this asset five years ago, and we say, hey, we're pretty reliable in terms of we know that we paid $200 for it, but we're not that sure that it's really worth $300 today. And so different types of assets and liabilities, we can be more or less certain because we can base our inputs in making the decision on whether it's $300 or $250 or 275 on things that are observable in some cases, such as a stock price, right? So if you're saying, well, I own 100 shares of Microsoft. Well, we can go and look and see what the stock price is of Microsoft, and we could tell what is the fair value of your investment, right? So we would say in that case, the input the input in deciding what is the fair value of your investment, we say that input is observable. Anybody could go look it up. It's on a stock exchange, right? It's based on market information, right? So we would call that, that's level one. And then as we go down to level three, level three is, is basically the extreme where the inputs are not observable at all. So the asset or liability, it, it's not traded on an exchange. There's really no similar asset or liability that we can go and look up a price. So so it's based on what we call entity specific information. So basically the manager, they're doing a discounted cash flow model or, or they're doing some kind of internal, they're doing some kind of internal uh, company specific um, estimates to figure out what is the fair value. And so we'd say, okay, well that $300 isn't quite maybe as reliable as a level one figure because it's based on managers assumptions and, and so forth. So let me give you the specific definitions for, for level one, two, and three. And I'll, I'll give you some examples that'll make it a little easier for you to understand. So let's say when we're talking about uh, level one, the fair value, we say that it's based on observable inputs. And again, observable means that somebody could go look it up. It's it's available to the market. It's not just that the manager uh, did this discounted cash flow analysis and is based on their assumptions. It's based on things that anybody could go look up. They're observable and they reflect quoted prices. Again, like the, the stock price for Microsoft or Home Depot uh, for identical assets or liabilities in actively traded markets. Okay, people are buying and selling Microsoft every day and so if you own some Microsoft stock we can look and say okay well the stock price for Microsoft is this and so that's that's an identical asset it's an actively traded market we've got a quoted price so we have a really high level of confidence and so when we say it's level one we're really saying okay this is this is like the most accurate in terms of fair value everyone can agree that that is really the fair value of your Microsoft stock okay now level two is also based on observable inputs that may be based on on quoted prices or something but but here's the thing it could be based on an asset or a liability that is similar not necessarily identical or it could be a situation where it's a less active market okay so it's still based on observable inputs this isn't just oh well the manager did this analysis and that's what they think right there are observable market uh, uh market information that we can use and uh, let me give you an example so let's say that uh, your city your city raised money uh, with, they issued a bond, so you've got some, you, and you as an investor buy that bond, so now you have a municipal bond, right? And that bond is going to pay you interest and so forth. So that municipal bond, if it's if invested, or uh, you buy it from your city, maybe your city's a, a kind of a small city, and so it's not like you can go and say, oh, there's this actively traded market, and I can look up the price of the municipal bond from my exact city, like people are buying and selling it. If it's a small city, there's there's not a lot of people 
actively buying and selling this this municipal bond but that doesn't mean there isn't some kind of observable inputs that we can use to go ahead and, and figure out what is the fair value of that municipal bond right because we can look at things like interest rates that that's our market information we could look at interest rates we could also look at the the debt rating we can look at the debt rating in this municipal bond. There are a lot of observable things, observable inputs we can use to come up with a pretty good valuation of what the fair value is of that municipal bond. Okay. Now, level three is where things get a little bit more sketchy because at level three fair value, now we're saying, look, we don't have any market information, right? I mean, basically what we have is we're, we're gonna, the managers the managers at the firm are going to make assumptions and they're going to do the best job that they can uh, to, to value this asset, right? So you might have something like mortgage servicing rights or you might have very complex derivatives and they're required to be uh, on the balance sheet at fair value. So we have to, to come up with some kind of fair value, but we can't just go and say, well, let's just look and see what, this, what the stock price is, or let's just go and see uh, the price of a similar asset or something. There might not be a similar asset, or there might not be any kind of uh, you know, actively traded market or, or anything at all. So we, we have some kind of asset that we know we need to record at fair value, but the, the managers are gonna have to make some assumptions. Now, here's something to bear in mind. When you're going to calculate or assess the fair value of an asset, if you have, let's say, any, any of the inputs at all that go into calculating that fair value are unobservable, then the entire asset is level three, okay? Even if it's just one of the inputs is unobservable, then we would say that it is a level three fair value asset. And so when you look at a balance sheet for a firm, there's there's a lot of required disclosures uh, relative to this level one, level two, level three. Not only are firms required to just say, okay, well, here's what's in level one, here's what's in level two, here's what's in level three. If you look at a firm's 10K, you'll see that they also have to say, all right, well, what were the changes that took place in our level three account during the, during the year? right? How did it affect net income during the period? Did it have a material effect on net income uh, in any unrealized gains or losses from the uh, level three fair value assets? The, the disclosures are, are quite extensive. And the goal is to give uh, investors and creditors as much information as possible so they can assess how accurate the fair values are uh, of these assets that are being recorded at fair value on the balance sheet.